Hi there. I bought these uh, German uh, style helm helmets uh, reproduction uh, some while ago, and uh, I've never been particularly happy with the um, the colour. They're just altogether too shiny. Um, I put some uh, decals uh, or decals on them, um, but uh, still, yeah, never been particularly happy. Um, with the um, the shininess of them, uh, having been through many photographs, uh, period photographs, most of the helmets were um, a very dull colour indeed. Uh, yeah, I've got two helmets here. Uh, this one I've started to uh, key. The uh, the straps uh, really are not that great, but um, hey ho. Uh, so I bought two kinds of. Uh, spray paint. Um, first of all, that was the um, Dunkelgrau, and uh, this is the uh, Feldgrau, um, which is a more of a sort of um, well, the German the Germans described it as a sort of apple green. Um, keying keying the helmets um, to get for the paint to get a bit of a better grip. Um, yeah, just use some sort of one eighty sandpaper. Now this one I've already uh, started to uh, keying. Uh, I'm not going to sand the decals uh, off um, because I want the helmets to have a uh, sort of a look of being overpainted, um, as I believe they they would have been. So you can still see the sort of outline of the decals. <laughs> Now, just giving the helmet a quick rub down to get the worst of the uh, excess paint dust off. Now, this is the result of test uh, test spraying. Um, the Feldgrau, see I'm not so sure about, it just looks a bit too green to me, it's a bit apple green. Uh, the Dunkelgrau, however, I think, uh, yeah this one, um, I think is going to be much better. Um, but having said that, I'm going to spray one uh, Dunkelgrau and one Feldgrau and uh, see how we get on. I have to say this this paint is really really good um, it really does stick like the proverbial you know what to a blanket um, and uh, really does give good coverage now at this point I've just remembered uh, a little something that I made up ages ago um, for spraying my M1 Schluter helmet I've often seen people on YouTube using these things and thought to myself, damn, that's a good idea. So I bought a um, Lazy Susan um, sort of mechanism and screwed it to a piece of wood. Ta-da! There we go, you see. Um, and it does just make life... Look at that, you see. It does make life a lot, lot... Yeah, you see, a lot, lot easier. As you can see, it's a fairly warm day, so the paint's uh, drying really very quickly. But already I can see that's going to look much, much better. Um, look at that, you see, I, I see now that's proper, proper matte, um, proper matte colour. Okay, with the second helmet, I'm going to do with the feld, uh, feld ground. I 
already as the paint goes on I'm thinking actually I quite like this color um, it's a completely authentic color um, I just thought it was going to turn out a bit too apple green you know sort of M1 uh, Vietnam apple green but uh, no it's actually really very good Of the helmet uh, painted um, I'm gonna do the just the inside lip I'm not gonna go too crazy um, but uh, yeah just a bit of a plastic bag and a bit of um, masking tape to stop the liner getting too uh, too much paint on it result now for the uh, dunkle growl um, uh, helmet I had an idea of um, sort of having a slightly rougher surface um, here's some sand um, I sieved uh, for ages um, for my M1 helmet, um, very very fine sand, and just sprinkle a little a little on top, and then use um, the uh, second coat uh, to uh, hold the sand in place. As I said, the um, sand I'm using very, very sparingly. Um, it's one of my main beefs with um, people when caulking um, American M1 helmets. Um, you know, it's a personal thing, but I often feel they use far too much cork, um, and the helmet winds up looking more like a hedgehog or a porcupine. Yeah, now I'm really liking the way that um, Dunkle Grouse come out. Really nice matte colour there. So this is the Feld Grouse. Um, and again, I've done the inside now. And uh, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now this is the bit I always really enjoy, uh, aging, aging um, the helmet. First thing to do, yeah, um, rims. Oh, um, just one of those things. Uh, a nice shiny rim because that's the first place the paint is going to get worn away. Um, and then with some 400 grit um, paper, I'm just going to go over the uh, air vents uh, and the rivets, uh, just taking some of the paint off. Um, as it would happen naturally in the field. Gonna have to be quite careful here because the paint. To be honest, I should have let the paint dry, um, you know, overnight really before doing this. Um, the paint really is uh, still a bit fresh. It's dried, um, but leaving it for longer is generally a much better idea. I'm just far too impatient. And when it comes to aging, I'm always thinking, well, 
where's the the most obvious sort of where points um and it's really going to be where the soldier you know, constantly takes his helmet off and uh, puts it on the ground so it's going to be the top and uh, for any um debris um you know it's the top of the helmet that's going to get the worst of the wear um again i should have really left this because the paint really is still a bit too fresh a bit too soft um but um anyway just literally rubbing it on um on bricks um uh it seemed to do a pretty good job really just a few deeper marks there you can see the rim um yeah that's one of my real things just you know really get there we go you see um some good sort of scuff marks i think that's looking pretty good really um and just so much better than the way it was before and it was just as i said far far too shiny same treatment here for the uh, Feldgrau helmet again I probably would have been better if I'd left it uh, for 24 hours the paint still is a bit soft and here we have it the Feldgrau helmet um, Again, I'm really liking that colour, that sort of, you know, that dull green. Um, I think that really works. So, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. And uh, I'll be back soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.